Welcome to part three of my series on how to format a book in Microsoft Word so that it'll work for both an ebook and a print book on Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing. Part three, we're going to format your images. And then I'm going to show you how to insert them correctly into your document so it works both for print and for ebook. And it'll keep the resolution size that you need and the placement. So here we go. First, a word about images. Copyrights. Never use an image you found on the internet without asking and receiving written permission from the owner of the website first. It is against the law. Take your own photographs, supply your own illustrations. Children. Do not include photographs of children unless they are your own or the child in the photograph is you or the child in the photo has since grown up. It is against the law to publish images of children without the written consent of a parent. This is true for any type of publication. Do not place photographs of children on your website, in a magazine, or in a book. Picture quality. When you submit your book to KDP, assume the printing quality will be lousy. Amazon is not promising award-winning image quality. It is up to you to use high quality images. The better the contrast, the better your image will print. In these examples, the image on the left by Ansel Adams, a very famous photographer, is a great example of good contrast and brightness. The photo on the right, which was taken by my mother in 1952, and which I used for the cover of my book, The Man in the Purple Cow House, is a horrible example. Were it not the only image I had of my father and his cow, I would never have used it. Image resolution. Digital photographs are a bunch of dots. Imagine a checkerboard. We measure their quality by how many of those dots are in an inch. For a picture to print well, it needs to be at least 300 dots per inch. Those dots are called pixels, so we say they need to be 300 pixels per inch. If your original image, like the one on the left, is better than that, in other words, has more than 300 dots per inch, you can always downsize it to 300 dots per inch without losing quality. But the image on the right was sent on my iPhone using the small resolution feature. There were only about 100 dots per inch. So when I blew it up to the size I needed for this book, the image was blurry. Just remember, you can always size down, but you can never size up. You need to start with high quality image resolution. How do we figure out what size to make our images for our book? We are going to format everything for the print book. It will automatically transfer well to the ebook. When we formatted our book in part one, we gave it a top margin of one inch, a bottom margin of 0.88 inches, an inside margin of 0.55 inches, and an outside margin of 0.66 inches. We are going to set our horizontal images to the full width of the column. To figure out the column width, you take the page width, which was six inches, and you minus the sum of the inside margin and the outside margin. So minus 0.55 inches plus 0.65 inches equals 4.8 inches. So the width of our column is 4.8 inches. Let's translate that to pixels. 4.8 inches times the 300 pixels per inch that we want gives you 1,440 pixels. For vertical images, we're going to limit them to the height of our column for a six by nine book. And one of the advantages of using the six by nine format is that these images are the perfect size for eBooks. To figure out the column height, 
you take the height of the page, which in this case is 9 inches, you subtract the sum of the top margin and the bottom margin, which in this case is 1.88 inches, and we get 7.12 inches. To translate that into pixels, multiply it by 300 pixels per inch. We're going to be flipping back and forth between pixels and inches. So remember these four numbers. Vertical images need to be 1,440 pixels wide or 4.8 inches at 300 ppi. And vertical images need to be at least 2,136 pixels or 7.12 inches at 300 ppi. Naturally, if you've formatted a different size book, you'll have to adjust the formulas. We are going to use these five programs for this tutorial. Photos and Preview, which we use to manipulate the images, come free with a Mac. For a PC, check out the list that I will include in the comments section below. I am assuming you already own Microsoft Word. You can download Kindle Previewer 3 from the Amazon KDP site. We will need it to check how our book looks for an ebook. We will use Acrobat Reader to check how our book looks for a print book, and that is a free download from Adobe. I will include links to both Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing and Adobe below. It's very difficult to go backwards once you start manipulating these photos, so don't manipulate your originals. Make a backup folder, leave the originals as they are, and manipulate a new set of images. Then you can always go back if you really mess up. Okay, the first thing we need to do is check that all of our images have a high enough resolution to be used in our book. So we're going to just use preview as a simple, quick way to check this. So when we double click on an image, preview automatically opens it up. That's just a, a default thing for the Mac. All right, so now this image of Rita, my grand dog, is going to be rotated. So we have to use the height as our width. That's a little confusing, I know. But anyway, we'll go to Tools. we look at Adjust Size. And the height, well, let's change this to pixels. And now our magic number was 1,440 pixels. The height is at 4,032. So that's going to be plenty large enough. Cancel that. All right, let's check this possum. Tools, Adjust Size. And the width of this is 2816, so that's a lot bigger than 1440. So even if we crop that, we'll have plenty of resolution. Oh, I goofed on that one. Come on. We're gonna... All right, now bridge. Um, this one is a little bit smaller, I think. So it's, uh, now this is going to be a vertical image. So the magic number on vertical images is 2136, and this is at 2592, so it barely makes it. Okay, now this last one is going to be the logo that we're going to use on the title page, and it's line art. So this has to be twice the resolution of a photograph. So instead of 300 dots per inch, we size it at 600 dots per inch. So and we want it to be 1.5 inches wide. So if we go to Tools, Adjust Size, and let's just for the practice here make this, um, let's not resample, make this 1.5 inches. Well, it's going to be a resolution of 1925. So that's going to be plenty big. We'll have to make it smaller, but for now it's going to be big enough. All right. So that's it. Everything is. The right size. There are four things we are going to do to each image. We're going to rotate it if necessary, change the image to grayscale, adjust the brightness and contrast, and save the final adjusted image at the required size. We're going to use photos for manipulating these images. And just to make sure that photos doesn't confuse the originals with the new ones, we're going to rename all these by adding ADJ for adjusted to each one. And then photos won't tell us, oh, I already imported that. 
Okay, here we go. A, D, J. All right, now we're going to take the whole folder and drop, drag and drop onto the photos icon. And it's going to say, oh, look at four new images. So we want to say import all new photos, which it will do. And here they are, all ready for us to manipulate. Let's start with our possum. So we double click on the possum. And you'll see up here, it gives us some options for making changes. So we don't need to rotate our possum, it's already fine, but if we were to need to rotate something, here's the little rotate icon right here. We're gonna go straight to edit, and we're going to change this to black and white image. So over here you see it says black and white. So if you click anywhere there, it changes it to black and white. And then we can scroll this little line here and make it lighter or darker. I think well the more contrast the better you can also use this light thing up here um, there that looks pretty good we want that little nose to be dark and the whites to be white so good okay so we've now adjusted the color and the brightness so we're done with that um, we don't need we can crop it a little bit let's take so to crop it you see the crop up here if you click that and then we're gonna just, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna crop this a little bit, make it a little closer. There we go. Make it a little more. Okay, good. You might wanna center it. All right, done. Now we're going to export the image. And when you export it is when you change it to the size you need for the column width, which is our, our 1440 pixels. So you go to export and you choose this export one photo and you make sure this here is set at width because we're doing a horizontal picture. And then I already did this, but change, make sure that's 1440. Um, it's already changed. So then you export that And we want it in our folder, images. And I'm going to make a new folder of adjusted images because I just am. OK, here we go. That's the black and white version. All right, export complete. OK, now we go back to our next image, which is the bridge. Double click that. And now this is vertical, and we want the vertical image to be 2,136 pixels. We don't need to rotate it, but we are going to change it to black and white. So we change it to black and white, and give it a little more contrast. We can make it lighter, and then more contrast here. Good. And we want to crop this fair amount. We can't crop it too much because it's not very high resolution. I will do that. Hopefully that'll be okay. Done. Okay, now we're going to export that. Export one photo. And we want height to be 2136. 2136. Export in our adjusted images folder. Export. There we go. That's complete. Go back to our images and we'll get Rita. And this one has to be rotated. So you just keep clicking this rotate until you get her where she belongs. Edit. Change to black and white. And this one needs, a, she's a white dog, so let's make her a lot more white than she is here. There we go. All right, done. Nope, I want to crop her. So let's crop out this top part here. I don't want that. I want her to be in the center. Okay, 
then. And we're going to export her. It's part one photo. And she's horizontal, so we're going to go to width. I make that 1440. Export. Good. In the adjusted images folder. And then the final one is going to be our line art. And like I said, line art is things like simple graphics, text that has very clear edges on it. We're going to, um, all we need to do for this is size it. So we're going to export one photo. I need to change any felt. We want the width. And here I need to change this to inches if I can. Hmm. I don't think I can. Huh. Um, so it's 600 pixels we want times one and a half inches. So that's 900 pixels. So 900. Export. And we are done. All right. So now here we have our adjusted images. Let's do this. Um, right here. And they're all just exactly the right size. And one of the reasons you don't want them to be too big is because Kindle has a limit on how big your file size can be. So you don't want them too big. You don't want them too small because then they won't look good. Now we're going to insert our images. So open up your template for 6x9 book text formatted that we made in the last tutorial and save it as image at, images added. Now the next thing you need to do is turn on show all non-printing characters, which you've already done so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is replace this peach plum press or whatever you might happen to have there with your colophon, your printer's logo. So you have already set up the formatting here to normal because that's um, what this text is. So the placing, the it'll be centered without an indent. And all we need to do is just replace that. So you can erase that. You don't want to erase that paragraph there. Paragraph return symbol there. Okay, and then you go to insert, or if you have an icon, you can click, great. Um, picture from file, which is adjusted images, and pick our peach plum press logo. Insert that. Good. Okay, that's done, and it should be at size. So if you were to just click the logo and you look in your formatting palette under size, you'll see that it's 1.5 inches. We're in good shape. All right, next we're going to go to the first page of the first chapter, which is here. And we're going to insert a photograph right here at the beginning of the chapter. This first paragraph has been formatted to the normal style so it won't be indented so we would, our, our photograph will hug the left hand margin. So we're just going to place our cursor right there at the beginning and we're going to press return two times. Okay, that gives us two spaces. We're going to place our photograph there, insert our photograph there, and we want a space between our photograph and our text. So place your cursor right there, go to insert, picture from file, and we're going to use a little Rita for this. So we'll go to Rita, insert. All right, there she is. Okay, we're going to click on her and we're going to double check that the size is 4.78, which it's not. So we, we want to just change that to 4.78 inches, which is what we really want. Okay, good. Now we're going to add a caption. So after the image, right there, give it a return. So we don't want any space between the caption and the photo, but we do want a space between the caption and the first paragraph. 
So here we are at the beginning, and we're just going to say Rita is sleeping. All right, and then all you have to do, because we already set up our captions formatting style in the last template, so let's just click anywhere on that sentence, go here to find captions, which is right here at the top, see? Click that, and that's italic, and that's all set to go. Now what we're going to do is place a photograph in the middle of the text. And I'm going to show you how to center it and make it smaller. So let's put our cursor at the end of this top paragraph on the second page. And this time give it three returns. One, two, three. The first paragraph return is the space between your text and your photo. The second is where the photo is going to be inserted, and the third is the space between the photo and the text. But we want our photo to be centered. So we're going to make a new paragraph style. All right, so we're going to go to New Style, and we're going to say Image, call it Image Centered. And we're going to base it not on normal indented, but on regular normal, because we don't want any indents. And we're going to center it. And we're going to make sure it's the style that we want. But I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's just for photos. But OK, but it'll be set up to match the spacing of your regular text. And say OK. OK, now we'll go to these three paragraph things. Find our photo image, image centered, which is I. Here it is. There we go. Okay, get this out of the way. All right. So place your cursor right here to the left of that middle paragraph symbol. And then you want to insert picture from file. Go to your file of adjusted images. And we're going to use the possum which has been formatted to fit the width of the column. So over here you can see it says width 4.79, which we really want 4.78. But we're not going to leave it big like this. We're going to make it smaller. We're going to just give it 2 inches wide. And we're going to make the change here in the formatting palette, not just adjust these handles. One, it's more precise, and two, then we know it's going to hold up when we convert this to an ebook, and that's really important. Now let's look at what happens when we insert a vertical image. So the vertical image that we have of the bridge is set, it's big enough to take up the whole page, but we're just going to put it here at the end of the paragraph. Well, we're going to give it three paragraph returns. We're going to center those with our images centered. Place the cursor in front of the middle one. Insert picture from file. And we want our bridge. Now you'll notice it jumps to the next page because it can't fit here. But let's say this is a, you know, we're doing a print book and an ebook, so we want to fill this space with a vertical image. So I'm going to copy this, just select, copy, command C, and we'll put our one, two, three spaces here, center them. I'm going to give some space between our paragraph and the bottom, and we're going to copy that. Here's the image right here. And this time I am going to use the handles. Um, and I'm going to press shift to make sure we don't change the proportion. And here you go. You can keep doing this until it's just big enough to fit the page. All right. Okay, now it'll take most of the page. Now we'll see what happens when we look at this as an ebook. And now the reason this isn't all the way at the end of the page is because it's too wide. 
Now that you've added images to your document, your table of contents is no longer valid. So go to page nine, which is your table of contents, and click somewhere in the table, preferably close to the title. You don't want to click too close to the page numbers or you'll get jumped to those pages. Then up by the table of contents, there's a little arrow, click that and update table. It'll ask you if you want to update the pages only or the um, entire table. It doesn't matter. You haven't manually changed anything that needs to be preserved. So either one, click OK. And there you go. Your table of contents is updated. So your print document won't look too much different than this. In fact, it won't look any different at all. But what you do is you go to File, Save As, and you choose PDF. And this is what Kindle Direct Publishing wants. This is the type of file that they want for a print book. So you have a PDF and you save. Now once that's been saved, and you go to that document, which is right here, and you open that as a PDF, then you'll see, let me, let's put this at uh, full size, you'll see what the pages look like as page numbers. You can see that we've hold, held our spacing, you can see how the images look, you can see that the images are all in place the way they're supposed to be, there they are, and this is exactly how the print book. Notice that the headers are all in place, page numbers are in the right place, we don't have page numbers at the beginning of the chapters which is good, we don't have page numbers here that's very good, and hopefully we don't have any pages, uh oh oops, that's not right. Okay, we shouldn't have pages here. So that has to be fixed. No, that's not good. You're not supposed to have pages there. So we can go back and fix that. All right, so you go back here, pick a page. Let's do, what was one of the ones that were culprit? I think this was a culprit. Let's go there. And we go to 150%, all right. We go to our headers and footers, and then we look at our toolbox, and we get rid of that different odd and even because we don't want those, and then we just get rid of those numbers. So let's see what we do have now. So let's go back to 25%, and it looks like we got rid of those page numbers there. Let's make sure we didn't get rid of the page numbers on the chapter pages. Nope, there they are. Two, three, four, five. Um, good. Let's make sure there's no chap, no pages on, no pages there, good. No page numbers there, good. All right. Get the idea of what you're supposed to check for in the PDF. Okay, so we're going to save that Word document and we're going to resave it as a PDF. So save as PDF, save, replace. Now we're going to go back to that document. And this time, hopefully we won't have those page numbers. Yay, look at that. Okay, good. All right, we do want page numbers at the beginning of the chapter. Here we go. Two, three, four. All right, all of our pictures are looking really good. They're like we thought they would be. This is great. Okay, so this is ready for print. So except that you have to delete um, for the final, final draft, you want to delete these little headings that we gave you, these things. Okay, all right, good. Checking how our document is going to look as a Kindle ebook is a whole lot easier. So make sure your document is saved. 
You can close it if you want. And then you're going to open Kindle Previewer version 3. You're going to get this screen. So we're here, it says open book, click that, say open book. And then scroll to your Word document, not your PDF, but your Word document template for 6x9 book and open that. Now you're going to have a little bit of a wait while it prepares your book for conversion. Fortunately, we have a small book. Okay, here we are. All right, so what you'll see over here on the left is that it shows you what this book looks like on a tablet, what it looks like on a phone, and what it looks like on a Kindle e-reader. It shows you the various sizes, and these are all determined by the reader. There's nothing you can do to control how the reader is going to read your book. They're going to choose which font they want to read it in. So their, their options will be Bookerly, Celia, Palatino, Baskerville, Habetica. That's not something you can control. Um, the size, the average is four, but they might not see very well and use six. Or maybe they like to read things really tiny and use two. Okay, so this is how it's going to be. You can see that there's some um, space at the beginning of your title page. Not, not as much as your print book, but it does show the various different sizes according to the H1, H2 specifications. It did hold the spacing between your centered type. When you get to the chapter head, it, um, it doesn't have a, it doesn't come down below the page. It removes the page, page numbers because ebooks don't have page numbers. Um, but, you know, just ignores what you've done. It includes a table of contents, but it is in its own format. And um, it keeps the size on your images. So let's look at some of our images. Here we go. So here you can see this image of Rita. It retained the full width of the column. So let's just say that we look at it at a, a larger size. Well, Rita still takes the width of the column. Let's say we use it at a smaller size. It's still the width of the column. And you can see that this one's smaller. OK, now let's look at our vertical images. So this is the one that we had for the whole page. So whether you have it at the smallest size, which is here, it's still the full page. Or if you have it at the largest size, let's see what happens. OK have the largest size. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It's still the full page. So certain things are retained. The left right um, justification is retained. The but you know, but things like the fonts are not retained. That's nothing you can do about it. That's just the way it is. That those are the options that every reader has and that they they can use to read the book, whatever their preference is. Nothing you can do about it. Okay, this the page size all right, so you can see that everything that we've done is working and it's fine and it's going to make a great ebook. You'll, of course, have removed these before you make your final file. And that's it. There, your practice document is finished. So stay tuned for part four create a professional looking book cover using Kindle Direct Publishing's free cover creator software. We will discuss what makes a good book cover and we will demonstrate how to make a cover using this software. In preparation, you might want to watch KDP's YouTube tutorial on Cover Creator. I'll put a link to it below. If this video was helpful, please click the thumbs up icon and feel free to leave comments. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.